Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. We've got a challenging project today to build this tall 12 draw shaker chest. Now they are very rare, but we were lucky enough to find one out at the Hancock Shaker Village. And that's coming up next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. There are many reasons to come and visit the Hancock Shaker Village. One might be to gaze at the round stone barn. I like that too. I come here for inspiration for our furniture collection. In a recent return visit to the brick dwelling, I want to show you what I found. This room is furnished as a cloak room. And over here on this tailor's workbench, we see some material and tools that were used to produce finished cloaks, such as these. What I wanted you to see were these massive units of drawers that were built into the wall in almost every Shaker community. After all, they felt that everything should have a place and that everything should be kept in its place. So with units such as these, that could be accomplished. But what you didn't see very often were massive freestanding chests such as this one. Now this is an old piece. It dates to 1806, and it comes from the Shaker community in New Lebanon, New York. No one really knows how they were used, but considering there could have been up to six brothers or sisters in a retiring room, maybe each one was assigned one large draw and one smaller draw. It's a beautiful piece, made from pine with hardwood knobs, nice dovetails on the corners of the drawers, and solid raised panel pine bottoms on the drawers. Now considering today's lifestyle, this is a massive piece of furniture. But once you get up close to one of these, the memory lingers. And if you're a woodworker, you just can't resist wanting to build one. Now in the interim, since we looked at that antique chest out at the Hancock Shaker Village, another tall chest just like it was auctioned at the Fruitlands Museum in Harvard, Massachusetts. And a dealer bought it for over $160,000. Now I'm sure the Shaker that built that chest rolled over in his grave when he heard that price. But with that in mind, I needed no further inspiration to get started on ours. And it was a lot of fun to build. Of course, I did use some more modern materials. I used plywood on the draw bottoms instead of solid pine. I also used plywood on the back of the chest. And I used modern glues to assemble all the joints. Now, the chest on the exterior is all pine. And we're going to use some cherry knobs. That's why I've left them off. I think the cherry knobs should be oiled, as the rest of the piece will be painted the old-time shaker red. So it'd be better to put them on later. Now, if you'd like to build a chest just like this, a measured drawing with the materials list is available. And you'll hear more about that before the program ends. I'd also like to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this. There is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now, if I had some 18-inch wide boards like the Shakers did, I could have eliminated this first step, which I actually completed last night. And that was to glue up some panels for the carcass of the chest. Two tall ones for the sides, one for the top, and a smaller one which divides the upper group of drawers. Now that they're all dry, I can remove them from the clamps, scrape off the excess glue, and sand everything smooth. Now this step is known as sizing the panels. I want all my panels to be nice and straight and square. 
So the first step is to rip it to width. And I've actually ripped a little bit off of each edge. The final dimension now is about a sixteenth inch wider than what I want. And even though the saw cuts are pretty smooth, I think I can improve on them. So I'm going to make one pass over the joiner, a thirty-second of an inch on each edge. Now this is a large panel, so I've installed this magnetic feather board to hold it tightly against the fence. The next step is to cut the panels to the correct height. So I'm going to use my homemade panel cutter. And out here over on the left, I've installed this floor stand as a support. And I like this type with the roller bearings because it allows the piece to move in any direction. Well, now we'll mark it for the correct height, which in this case is going to be 78 and 1 quarter inches. And trim it in the same manner. Let me show you what the drawers ride on. There's a series of hardwood runners, and the top of the runner is what the drawer will actually rest on. The runner is sized to be the same thickness as the rails, so as you open the drawer below, it won't tip out too far. And let me show you on this other side where you can see it a little more clearly. The side of the runner has a little piece to it, and that spaces the drawer away from the side of the carcass. Now all these runners sit in dados, and I'll make those over at the table saw. Now there are 18 dados in all that run across the entire width of the panel. I've set up my table saw with a dado head cutter for a three-quarter inch width and a quarter inch depth. And by continually moving the fence to new locations, I can run them all through. Well, because I've reached the limit of my fence, I now have to bring it back towards the blade and start working from the other end of my panel. In order to conceal the edges of the plywood back, I've recessed it in the side panels. It sits in a rabbit, which I'll make over at the table saw using my dado head cutter. I noticed on the antique original out at Hancock that they had joined the rails to the sides with a half dovetail joint. So I've outlined it to show you what it is. The top of the joint is left square, but the bottom of the joint has a little dovetail. Now that helps add a lot of strength to the joint, preventing it from pulling apart. So I've carried that through on our project. Now the shakers would have cut it by hand, but I'm going to use a router and a little jig that I made. Now the jig is just a piece of plywood with a strip nailed on the bottom that fits into the dado I've already cut. There's another strip on the top that prevents the router from going in too far. And this slot right here corresponds to the collar that I've installed on the router. I've also placed a three-quarter inch dovetailing bit in the router and set the depth so that it's exactly even with the dado I've already cut. It works great. starting to get ready to make the rails. And I have to cut a dovetail that'll fit into the slot I've already made on the end of each rail. Now the rail stock is an inch thick and it's two inches wide. And this is just a representative piece that I've used to check the setup at the router table. And since that fits pretty well, I'm going to run the actual rail. Now for the router table setup, I'm using the same bit that I used in the router earlier. And I have this high fence 
which helps me guide the piece through. And because the piece is narrow, I like to use my combination square set on top of the fence to just guide it along, much like you use a miter gauge in a table saw. <laughs> One more check of the fit. That's great. Now I'll do it to all the rest of the rails. Okay, that dado that I've just made is in the center of the long rail that goes across just below the small drawers. And this vertical rail intersects it right there. Now you'll notice that that is also a dovetail joint, so I'll complete the cut with my router. Here I've just clamped on a piece of plywood just as a guide for the collar on the router. I've just completed making a dovetail on the end of that center rail. I'm going to check to see how it fits in this intersection. That's pretty good. And I've also laid out the locations where I need to make a dado and dovetail to pick up the short rails. This is the panel that divides the upper drawers. It slips into a groove in the back rail. These dados I cut are for the drawer runners. I'm going to attach it to the front center style with some biscuits at three locations. Now there's one more thing I want to do before I start the assembly of the carcass, and that's to cut some biscuit slots in the bottom of this lower rail and at the very bottom edge of the side panel that'll receive this little angled piece which forms the shape of the leg. If I don't do it now, I won't be able to get the biscuit joiner in there later. Now we can begin the assembly of the carcass. A little bit of glue on the end of each rail, and I've already installed some glue in the slot that I cut. I'm going to start with the back rails first. Just tap, gluing them and tapping them in place. Now I'm going to put the back plywood on next because that'll allow me to square up the carcass. The plywood has been cut perfectly square. I've applied some glue to the rails and the rabbit along the back edge. I'm just going to slip it in. And as long as I hold the top edges even with the sides of the carcass, it'll be nice and square. Now with one side attached and this top edge flush, I can now check the other corner. You can see the plywood is above the side. To square it up, I'm just going to push it down till it's even and fasten it with some brads. These are going in nice and snug, and with the addition of the glue, it's never going to come apart. Now this is our center divider for the top section, a little glue at the cutout and along the back edge. And I can set that in place. And I'll just put one tack up here at the top where it's centered. Okay, just one more thing to glue up, and we'll call it a night. Now here I've used my tapering jig 
to make an angled piece for the front part of the leg at the bottom of the chest. Now there's the slots for the biscuits. Last night, all the glue joints set up nicely, and now I'm cutting out the legs on the side of the chest. I've set up a straight edge clamp for the long cut, which actually guides the base of my little circular saw, and now I'll just cut the angles freehand. Well, now I'm ready to cut out some plywood at the lower edge of the back. And I want to do that so that I don't see it when I look through the side between the legs. But I want to leave as much plywood as possible on this edge to strengthen this back leg, because after all, this piece is heavy. Well, now I'm ready to start working on the top of the chest. And I actually dadoed it in three places, once along each edge to receive the side of the chest and once in the middle for the center partition. And what that does is adds a lot of strength to that connection. To make the dado, I'm going to use my router, which is equipped with a collar and a straight cutting bit. The collar simply rides up against the edge of my straight edge clamp. All right, now I've moved the straight edge clamp a little bit so that now when I make the second pass, the data will be the right width to receive the 3 quarter inch thickness of the side. Now the front edge of the side dados needs to be carefully squared off so it fits nice and tight. Now this little rabbit at the back edge of the top will catch the plywood on the back of the chest. Now I've changed bits in my router. I've now equipped it with a half inch round over bit. And because I'm only using a portion of the bit, I can't depend on the ball bearing as a guide. So I've installed this guide fence and now put a bull nose on three edges of the top. Now with glue in the dados and along the rabbet at the back edge, I'm ready to set the top in place. And once I get it in its final position, I'll fasten it with some screws. Now for each screw location, I'm going to drill and counterbore. Now for the screws, I'm just using an inch and a half bugle head screw. I like to fill the holes left by the counter bore with plugs of the same material. So I've cut some out of pine over at the drill press. And all I have to do now is apply a little bit of glue to the plug and a little bit in the hole. And after they dry, I'll cut off the excess. When I built the runners for the prototype, I built enough for two, because I didn't want to take the time to have to set up twice. Now, I want to show you what the steps are, though. 
First, I made two rabbets on the back side. And what that does is allows the piece to slip into the dados we've made in the side. Not too tight, because I want the side to be able to expand and contract freely. Next, I made another rabbet here so that it would be flush with the rail, so the drawer will slide in smoothly. And I left a little material on the side so that the side of the drawer will not hit the carcass. Now, all I have to do to set them in place is just leave a little gap on each end and put one screw right in the middle. Well, now I'm ready to start building the drawers. Now, whether they're small drawers at the top or the large drawers at the bottom, all the construction methods are the same. I've already taken the time to rip to width and cut to length all the various components. This is for a large drawer. Two side pieces, half inch thick pine that I planed out of three quarter inch thick stock. A half inch piece for the back of the drawer and a full thickness three quarter inch piece for the front of the drawer. Now the first thing I want to do is make a 7 16 by 3 8 inch rabbet on the ends and across the top edge of all the draw fronts. One more rabbet on the draw front, and that's along the bottom edge, except this time it's only going to be an eighth of an inch wide. Now this half inch wide dado is at the back edge of the side piece, and it'll receive the back of the draw, like that. This quarter inch wide groove along the bottom edge of the side pieces is for the plywood bottom of the drawer. OK, a little adjustment to the rip fence. And I'm ready to make the last dado, which goes in the drawer front. And it must align with the dado in the drawer side. Let's take a look at one of the prototype drawers. The draw front is connected to the side with half-blind dovetails. The first part to mill is the tail that goes in the side piece. So I've set up my dovetailing jig according to the manufacturer's instructions, fastened the side piece in place, and now using my router, I'll cut the tails. Let's take another look at the prototype. The pins, which is the end grain you see here from the draw front, are cut next. So after making some adjustments to my dovetailing jig, I can route those out. Well, now it's just a matter of assembly. A little bit of glue on all the dovetails and the pins, and then I just slip it together. Now a little bit of glue in the dados of the side pieces and on the ends of the back piece. I'll just slip it in and fasten it with some brads. Now I'm just going to put one tack in each corner at the back of the, back of the drawer. Now I'm just going to measure diagonals. And if they're equal, it's nice and square. 44 and 13. OK, that's good. Now I'm just going to put one tack right in the middle here where the glue is. Hold it square. OK, the last one. Let's see if it fits OK. 
good. Now a little bit of final sanding, and this piece will be ready for the finish. Well, I'm now applying the first coat of finish on the chest, and I'm starting with a latex enamel primer. And I've tinted it gray, and after it dries, I'll sand it lightly with some 220 grit sandpaper, and then put the finish coat on, which is gonna be this nice old time shaker red color which is also a latex enamel finish. You know, you can get a lot of satisfaction from building a piece like this. And I know that there's more than enough room in there for my entire collection of plaid shirts and blue jeans. Norm Abram is the author of the book, The New Yankee Workshop, which is available in bookstores and libraries nationwide.